Hello? Hello, this is Catherine Samples with Dr. Connect. All right. And Carl, jo and Carl Johnson from Medigame. Great. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, our webinar on the seven new ways to generate revenue with patient engagement. They said hello, but uh, our presenters today are Catherine Samples, Director of Sales with uh, Dr. Connect, and Carl Johnson, the Senior VP of Business Development for Medigame. I'm Clint Hughes, the VP of Marketing for Medigain, and I will be your host and moderator for today. Uh, as we said in the email, and we promised, here are our seven ways to increase revenue with patient engagement. We will be talking about each one of the bullet points throughout the day, plus also some reports that you can run for your practice management system that will also help you check to be sure that you have uh, the right patients, the right payer mix, and uh, the right way to uh, optimize your reimbursement. So first of all today, we will uh, call Catherine, and Catherine, speak to us a little bit about uh, Dr. Connect. Well, um, Dr. Connect is patient engagement software that um, does text, email, and voice appointment reminders, which are interactive and provides two-way text messaging. We do recall notifications um, to reach out to patients that don't currently have an appointment um, to get them back in for um, continuity of care. We have um, post-appointment surveys for patient feedback, which are linked to online reviews, um, as well as text message payment notifications. So it just it's a system that will automate a lot of the processes that are a big um, drain on valuable staff time that helps okay. increase revenue and reduce overhead. Great. Thank you. Okay, Carl, uh, fill people in a little bit about Medigate. Carl? Do you have this on now mute? I'm off. Now I'm off mute. Okay, Medigain is a full service revenue cycle management company. Our primary uh, business is physician billing. Um, we focus on practices just like yours, physician practices and provide a full scope of services, including the billing, reimbursement, credentialing, and coding services to physician groups. Also work with ambulatory surgery centers and physician groups um, that are part of hospital systems. We're an industry leader, the eighth largest revenue cycle company in the US, and uh, have a predictive analytics tool and business intelligence that can help you manage the practice. And we really enjoy our clients that are working with Dr. Connect because it gives us an opportunity to help them build their businesses. Thank you, Clint. Oh, you bet. And folks, uh, we will be sending you a link to a recording of this webinar, a copy of the slides, and we'll also give you a copy of um, <clears throat> our most popular uh, ebook that we have out there, Com Eight Common HIPAA Compliance Errors to Avoid. So Carl, why don't you speak a little bit about uh, what we're talking about when we're talking about patient engagement. So patient engagement is really the interactions between patients and their healthcare providers. Um, one of the things about working with your patient base is you don't have many opportunities to really kind of direct the type of patients and the type of services that you're rendering. And uh, this is a way um, that we're going to talk about today to really help you um, direct those types of patients and build the kind of practice that you're looking for. Healthcare providers, um, through using tools, both software tools and procedures in their offices enable patients to become more participatory and engaged in managing the maintenance of overall health and treatment. Thank you. Right, great. And so um, we kind of touched on that about the seven ways at the very beginning. And uh, Catherine talked about the, uh, the technology and patient engagement. So this first part, we will start off with uh, Catherine. Tell us all about uh, bulk messaging and how this helps. The bulk messaging feature in Dr. Connect, um, there's two aspects. You have the time block text feature, which allows you to uh, make quick work of 
changing provider schedules and notifying um, patients within a certain time frame of practice closings. So instead of having to uh, sit there and make all of your phone calls, um, you can just set the, the bulk messaging feature with the time and range. Um, so you can do it for all of your patients within a certain time frame or just for an individual provider's schedule within the time frame. Um, and then you can also use the bulk messaging for uh, marketing or newsletters as well. Okay. And this uh, ties right into, since you were doing bulk messaging, but here's more of a one-on-one, -on -one, right? Right, exactly. So the appointment reminders um, through an interface with the practice's current scheduling system, the appointment reminders are delivered by, as I said, text, email, and phone calls. Um, they are all interactive, allowing patients to confirm or request reschedules. The, we do have two-way texting capabilities, which helps reduce the call volume in the practice. A lot of practices struggle with that inbound um, hold time, so being able to communicate quickly and effectively um, in a method that's not using a telephone is helpful in a practice. Um, you can customize all of our messages so they are not canned appointment reminders. You can uh, start and customize them from top to bottom. Um, you can, you've got up to three delivery intervals. Um, this, the slide that we're looking at right now is the dashboard, which just gives you a, an overview to see your confirmations, reschedules, and all inbound patient text messages. So this is ideal for small practices or enterprise level um, facilities. So the dashboard can be seen by individual location and then there can be an enterprise level dashboard that can see across all locations for, for the bigger practices. Um, and it just gives you a couple of graphs allowing you to track response and no-show rates. And uh, somebody asked a question about HIPAA compliance. Yes, it is HIPAA compliant. Um, the, the text messages, you can either have the patient uh, sign off on um, receiving, you know, full, full uh, disclosure about their, uh, about their conditions within the text messages, which meets uh, HIPAA compliant regulations or if you just prefer not to get into having those kind of conversations via text message, you can use the two-way texting feature just to say, you know what, let's call, call in and let's discuss that. So you've got a couple different ways. But this, the system as is is a HIPAA compliant and secure system. Great. Well, and like it says there, no shows uh, means no revenue. So as you're reminding people to show up, one of the big questions is, uh, which patients and procedures and payers do you need to grow your practice? Um, and this is one of the things we promised you that we'd cover, so right now, I'll turn it over to uh, Carl Johnson. Carl? Off of mute. Okay. Uh, using online tools, you really have the ability to um, drive certain types of patients to your practice. Uh, many practices have full panels, um, difficulty scheduling new patients, and, uh, and this is an opportunity for you to do something about that. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to run a test on closed or paid claims so that we can understand which patients you're really after um, based on the payer and based on the type of services you're rendering. So I like to compare like financial classes uh, by the payer reimbursement ratio, so your payment to charge ratio uh, by financial classes. So am I doing better with Medicare or Blue Cross? And that's a question many people just don't know the answer to. I also like to compare like CPT codes. So classes, am I doing better on office visits? Am I doing better on procedures? Where should I be looking to build the practice? So doing these tests requires that you really understand your fee schedule, that you've got it equally marked up, or you're using the same charge structure 
kind of across the board. So you're using, say, two times Medicare, uh, but you're using the same fee for every insurance company. It can sometimes throw you off. Some people bill Medicare at the Medicare rates, and when you're doing an analysis, you might think, wow, I'm doing great compared to my charges on Medicare, but it really is because you're charging less for Medicare than you would for Blue Cross or Aetna. So really, a best practice is to use a base charge, and there's a number of tools out there you can use, anything from Nginx to multipliers of Medicare. I like to keep it simple and use a multiplier of Medicare typically somewhere between two and two and a half times Medicare. So, and then not have that different between different payers or classes. Next slide, Clint. So here's an example of this. So, and this is an analysis that, that we could help you with if you were interested in doing that. But basically what we do is I look at closed claims. And what I mean by that are claims that are paid, either paid by the payer or paid by the patient, but it's wrapped up in a nice package with a bow on it, and it's a done claim. It went the way it should have gone. What you don't want to do is you don't want to throw in the mix things that will throw you off. For example, if you're billing for venipunctures from Blue Cross and they're always considered included in the office visits, that would lower your payment to charge ratio on them, but you know that that's going to be a little bit artificial. You also want to make sure the contractual adjustments are being taken appropriately in line with your contracted rates and that if you have small balances, that those are adjusted off um, appropriately. What you don't want to do is you don't want to include claims that are completely written off or are still sitting out there on the AR. So in this case, we can look at the reimbursement ratios on the little uh, chart in the top, and you can see that for um, your Medicare Advantage plans, you're getting 29 cents on the dollar, and for your Blue Cross, you're getting 46 cents on the dollar. So there, it might make a lot of sense to try to push somebody who has a higher reimbursement ratio. For example, if we're looking at United Healthcare, and based on this fee schedule for this sample made up practice, they're getting 69 cents on the dollar. The more United Healthcare patients you can get compared to Blue Cross or Medicare Advantage patients, the better off the practice is going to be. So really understanding those uh, payment to charge ratios by payer when you've excluded the junk that would confuse you, there's an opportunity there. All right, next slide, Clint. Do you want to jump to the next slide, Clint? I did. Whoops. Oh, there it goes. Uh, there we go. That's All it. right, beautiful. Yep, that's it. Okay, so now I've done the same thing by CPT code. And in this case, you know, we can see that there are different payment to charge ratios for the procedures, you're getting less than you are, for example, for a, a 92014. Um, so in this case, we're looking at which services pay better, and so you have an opportunity as you're trying to promote, bring patients back, to decide where you're going to spend your money trying to fill up slots in your practice. And this works especially well if a practice is full or nearly full. So we're really comparing visit codes to procedure codes to say, how am I doing on those? And do I have an opportunity to, to change my charge mix? All right, Clint. OK. Well, that's a good point, Carl, because as you're doing that, you might realize that some of your people, as you've checked, do have some chronic conditions. And that's a real opportunity that is out there right now is chronic care management. So that's where we're going to bring Catherine back in so she can uh, address how you can use these Doctor Connect tools to uh, stay in contact with these people. And also, uh, isn't there a um, like a monthly fee that you get from all these people, Catherine? There is. So the um, chronic care management is for patients with two or more chronic conditions. And um, a CPT code of 99490 pays on average $41 a month per patient um, to providers who deliver 20 minutes or more of non-face-to-face -face chronic care coordination um, to the eligible Medicare beneficiaries. So obviously the, the additional revenue stream for the practice is very attractive, but the topic then becomes, how do we effectively communicate with those patients? 
So you have a couple of options with Dr. Connect. <clears throat> the two-way text messaging, you're going to need to be able to have a system that has capability of being able to generate reports, which we do. So, <clears throat> sorry. So these reports, one of the reports can say, <clears throat> so sorry. One of the reports displays um, all of the patients that you have met that time criteria of 20 minutes and you're ready to bill. The other report shows these patients you have not and um, here's the amount of time left for this month um, that you need in order to bill. So the two-way texting, time and date stamps, every um, every communication between staff and patient throughout the month. Um, the click to call feature will um, track the duration of any calls. So you can be on the patient contact sheet, which is what you see on this slide, and, um, and either text them or under the call history at the top, there's a click to call feature. So it makes um, tracking and um, staying in communication with the patients very easy. So you can segment this. So when we're talking about um, those those reports, I mean, you can pull out the ones that you are billing that 99490 because you're going to have to be keeping track of them to do this. That's minutes. right. <clears throat> so you can That's have a good in your point. System, you can have a bucket of your chronic care patients here, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so um, just like and uh, just like in in Carl's deal. So uh, if you're looking at the people, you know, United United Healthcare on the previous ones, which of your payers you could make a bucket of people who are with uh, United Healthcare because you're getting a lot more from them than you are Blue Cross Blue Shield and do the reminders, hey, it's time for your one-year checkup, it's time for your six-month checkup, et cetera, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the recall notifications um, are for those patients who do not currently have an appointment. So those can be based on your diagnosis code, appointment type, doctor status, location, um, and you can create as many different uh, notifications as you wish. Um, so, for example, if you have um, an OB-GYN practice, they are required to reach out to any patients who have had an abnormal pap smear um, six months after uh, that appointment. So these, um, these are very helpful in, again, keeping with the continuity of care and, for legal purposes, keeping the practice um, in the example that I gave, um, they legally have to reach out to those patients within six months. So being able to have um, technology do this for you also makes sure that nothing slips through the cracks, so to speak, because of, because you get busy. Huh. So how much did you say uh, per month the average on that 99490? Um, Forty-one dollars a month on average. It is based okay. on based by state. Wow. I mean, so just a uh, hundred of your patients, if you're doing that and doing this regularly and using the technology, that's an extra uh, four thousand dollars in your pocket. So Correct. That's right into the bottom line. That's great. Okay. And I would so, add, I would add to that, Clint, that many practices are already doing this work. They're just not asking to get paid for it. Oh, and so here we go. This leads right into how will your mix change because if you're tracking the CPT codes and you and I mean you could search through those codes for the chronic conditions like the diabetes or the uh, Crohn's disease, right? And see who you're billing for those because those are the ones that with the chronic conditions and so you could then get them into this program, right? Absolutely. So what I like to do is to really help efficiently manage the practice. You know, ultimately what we're looking to do is we're looking to try to say, how do I fill my practice up with the things that are going to reimburse the best? Providing good quality care along the way, 
but here's where I'm going to focus my practice. So what I like to do is I like to create a matrix. And by doing that, I take my top CPT codes and the top payers and look to say, what are they really paying me? And again, I'm using those closed claims that we talked about before. So claims that are paid or nearly paid by the insurance company or by the patient. And then I look by CPT code, what are my best and worst paying payers by code? Um, and are there some code combinations from common charges that I can get to? Um, how does that payment rate compare to Medicare? And who are those that are below average payers? So it really gives us an opportunity to take a look at that and to do something about it. Let's jump to the next slide. So here's an example of it, and I realize this is a fair bit of work to do. Um, we're fortunate at Medigain to have a wonderful analyst who can put this into um, some powerful analytic tools and help you come up with that, which we're happy to do. It's a way for us to get to meet practices. But we can look here, if I look at the bottom line in the big table, I look at my favorite code, 99214, an established follow-up visit of moderate complexity. And you can see that there's a pretty big range of payments. We have payers that are paying us $98, and for the same services, payers that are paying us $54. So I'm looking at the high and the low payments and saying, am I better off? you know, trying to fill up my few open slots that I have with Blue Cross patients, or am I trying to, better off trying to fill them up with Aetna patients? And that just is a powerful tool for you, and it's not something that physicians normally um, understand too well. You know, they're frustrated many times by low reimbursement rates, by insurance companies being slow to pay, and the hoops they would want you to jump through. But here's a way to say, okay, I realize, you know, Blue Cross puts me through a few extra hoops, on the out-of-state um, patients, but it's worth it. Or I look at Medicare, and, and many patients say, oh, I don't like to see Medicare patients because this, that, or I'm not getting paid enough. But here on the E&M codes, many people find, depending on their location, that Medicare is their best payer. And it gives the doctors really kind of a new outlook on this. So this is something that once you have it put together um, is a powerful tool. Now, again, I'm looking at this from closed claims rate. But a shortcut to do this, if you don't have that, is just take the codes that you know you're doing all the time. Um, you can analyze them um, from a report from almost any practice management software system. And then pull up some EOBs and just pull up samples. They're normally pretty much the same across the board, uh, with some exceptions, um, especially if you're out of network. But you can take a look at those and kind of create this same matrix. Um, it doesn't give you quite as good a data, but it's better than nothing. But again, this is something we do for our practices and really try to help them understand how shifting the charge mix or the payer mix can have a positive impact on the practice. Thank you, Clint. And, well, and Carl, we do have Medigain Insights. You kind of alluded to that at the beginning with our industry-leading proprietary business analytics and reporting. So we have, it's called Medigain Insights, and they can pull reports like this every day if they want to. They don't have to wait till the 10th of June to see how they did in May. They could pull it up today and see how they've done so far in the month. You want to speak a little bit about Insights? Yeah, Medigate Insights is a powerful analytics tool and basically it's pulling from live claims data and puts it into a format that I like to describe as what I want to show the doctor. So I can look at, just like this slide is, I can look at payments by CPT code and by insurance company, but I can also look at their productivity over time. I can look at individual physicians. I can look at individual CPT codes or diagnosis codes and get into the data in a way that's meaningful. It's not that it's going to replace the report writing tools that are in most practice management software systems, but this is easy to get to. It's hard to do it wrong because you have these reports kind of pre-formatted for you and memorized. So rather than going and creating a report, and how many of us have had our doctors do that, and all of a sudden they panic because the numbers don't look right because they've put in a wrong filter or parameter. So Medigain Insights is a powerful tool that allows you to keep control on the practice. It's great for practice administrators and for physicians to look at. Thank you, Quint. Great. Well, you know, the whole thing now is coming in fee-for-value. 
and part of it is the quality of care. And this aspect of Dr. Connect feeds right into that fee for value, doesn't it, Catherine? Um, it does. So the quality of care surveys lets you um, measure um, with patient feedback how your practice is doing. So again, this is an automated um, automated process or feature within Doctor Connect that the patient will receive an email the day following their appointment, and surveys are fully customizable. Um, you get immediate feedback. the uh, The questions are just the the um, radio buttons, and our system will score each survey a one through five star. Any surveys that score a four or five, that patient gets an immediate automated bounce back, inviting them to do an online review. And the practice can choose which review sites they wish to be reviewed on. So they can have as many different review sites that will be tucked into that automated bounce back email. So all the patient has to do is simply copy the comments, click the link, and paste the comments. So we try to make it as, as easy as possible. So your patient feedback to help you um, with an overview of the practice along with your online reviews um, helps you um, keep the practice running efficiently and the reputation management will help bring new business through positive online reviews. Yeah, and do you have any, um, I, I saw some data, I'm trying to think that like, especially the millennials now, that's one of the things they do is they go and check uh, the online reviews mm -hmm. and, and the reputation. Do you have any like, is it 25, 50, 75% of people now are picking doctors based on their reviews? Yeah, I think that it's a little over 60% are doing the online searches. So if your practice is not using uh, tools, uh, the tool for reputation management, you really need to get into it because that is a, a hot button. And if you Google your doctor or um, your practice or just Google your specialty, uh, within your city, you're going to see that if you don't have if you don't have reviews out there, your competing practices do. Well, wow. so it, it's kind of a uh, a double a, a double whammy of good because um, you send them that that survey, right? Mm -hmm. And then they can roll that right over into into the reviews. So it that's saves right. A lot but the thing, the, the 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 big point on that is, is that only the patients who have who have reviewed you as a four or five star get the invite to review you online. So oh, you'll get immediate well, feedback on all of your from all of your patients, but the ones that have scored you poorly, you'll be able to reach out to try to rectify the issue, but the uh, but they don't get an invite. So only the ones that score well will receive that invite. So it really helps you take control of your online reputation. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point because th that's one thing you don't want if somebody is having, because sometimes the social media is, is like a uh, open form uh, suggestion box or complaint hotline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so true. this allows you right. So this allows you to be sure that it's just the good ones. And at the same time, then the people can follow up uh, with the ones that are doing the the one, two, or three, right? Right. Exactly. So they'll have their the patient's name and the phone number so that they can follow up with them. And so, and this goes into all the ones I see over there on the right, the the, the Yelp and and Zocdoc and all that. These are a few of the examples, but yes, any review site whatsoever, Google can be on here as well. So um, if there are any of uh, any review sites that you wish to be on that are not on here, this is just a sampling. Okay, well, here it is. It's all about uh, taking it to the bank. So um, I'll let Catherine, you, and Carl kind of bounce back and forth because using the Doctor Connect for the payment notifications and then, Carl, it's all about the uh, putting it in the bank at the end of the day. So, Catherine, speak a little bit on that. <laughs> That's right. Who doesn't want to get paid? 
So um, the, the text message payment notifications, um, these are really to supplement your paper statements because paper statements can be um, costly. Um, not only costly, costly just for the um, printing envelopes and paying for postage, but the time that it takes your staff to, to do this. So using the automation and the text messaging um, will help reduce that overhead. Um, and with the automation, you can set up as many different rules, either based on the past due amount um, or the payment due date. And um, if you wanted to have different intervals and say our first, our first notification is going to go 10 days prior to the due date, a second one is going to go uh, five days prior to the due date, um, and then one on the due date. And you can change your messages to be exactly what you want to say for each interval. Um, you can also drive traffic to your patient portal by inserting a link to your portal. So if they have the ability to make an online payment, they can do so right from their phone. So they can click on the link to the portal and make their payment. So if mobile banking is, is working for banks, why not let it work for practices too? That's true. Would, Carl, the, the, yeah, the, uh, some idea yeah, about how much more efficient are uh, the clients you see that have some kind of system like that? Oh, it, it makes a tremendous difference in your practice. Um, I think that over the last couple of years, we've really seen an increase in patient financial responsibility. Wouldn't be surprised to see next year that it's over 30% of the revenue for most practices. And so as patients have larger deductibles, co-insurances, co-pays, you've really got to get that uh, taken care of quickly. And this is an efficient way to do it. It's something that comes to everybody's mobile phone. Um, they can take a look at it. It's quick. It's easy. It's not stuck in a pile of mail somewhere. And then they can be directed right to your portal to make those payments online. And if I take my own mother, for example, who's just over 80, um, she pays her bills online too. And this didn't used to be the case even a few years ago, but it really, really has increased. And this is an opportunity for you to get paid faster while the patients still rem remember how much better the doctor made them feel. And that's the real trick. The average value of an outstanding receivable from a patient uh, decreases between 1% and 2% every day. So the longer it takes you every day, the longer it takes you to get the payment, um, the less likely you are to get paid, and the lower you're going to end up uh, being reimbursed. Wow. OK. So um, Catherine, in doing all this about the appointments and the reminders, you all interface with a lot of different practice management systems? We do. Um, a lot of different practice management systems and uh, EHR, EMR systems. Um, we have bi-directional interfaces with uh, all scripts, Centricity, Advanced MD, um, but, uh, but there are many, those are the ones that we have bi-directional, but, uh, but numerous ones that, that uh, we have had interfaces with for years. So <clears throat> Dr. Connect, you can reduce your no-shows by up to 30%. Um, well, and Catherine, I want to touch base on that because you mentioned some of the systems that you have bi-directional. And Carl, uh, Metagame works on like the top 10 of the top tier. And all those, uh, the, the Advanced MD, the Allscripts, the eClinical works, uh, our team are experts in all those systems plus an additional ones, correct? It's absolutely right. And I think when you start talking about having efficient interfaces to your practice management system, whether they're one direction or two directions, you really can improve your collections. and really improve the, the satisfaction of the patients and at the same time make the operations of the practice more efficient. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and take, take all this stuff uh, off their hands so that they can devote more time to uh, quality patient care to get a better reputation, to get more uh, patients of the, of the right uh, mix and policy and, you know, even some of those chronic care people, right? Absolutely. We're all in this business because we care about patients. We want to make sure we're providing good clinical care. But 
the old saying goes, no margin, no mission. So if you're not able to pay your employees, pay your mortgages, you know, feed your families, then it's all for nothing. So here's an opportunity for you to use technology to your advantage. And Catherine, I know you have more to talk about here. Yes. Yeah, so um, the value proposition of being able to automate a lot of the processes within the practice that are manual, um, there it's, it's invaluable to be able to have the staff um, be more focused on the patients. It increases patient satisfaction. Um, reducing your no-shows obviously are, is going to increase your revenue. Um, sending the recall notifications are going to increase your, uh, your returning patients. The uh, online reviews will help drive new patients to your practice. <clears throat> so new practices, new revenue. And then it um, reduces overhead by helping eliminate your hard costs and that uh, drain on your staff time. And then the text message payment notifications help you get paid quicker. And, there, and there's even more value. Here's some other points, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, uh, inviting patients to your patient portal either with your appointment reminders or with your text message payment reminders helps you meet meaningful use measures. Um, patient satisfaction does increase because they can more easily and quickly communicate with the practice. Um, and they feel more valued with the surveys. They feel like they're heard. So if they have good things to say about the practice, they want to be heard about that. If there are things that you need to work on and areas for improvement, they want to be able to express that as well, and that helps you increase the efficiency of your practice as well. So um, Dr. Connect really will be your new MVP or most valuable player. If you calculate your average revenue per appointment multiplied by the number of no-shows per month, you will easily see that you can't afford not to have us. Wow. Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, there on the uh, lower right in that box, you do see the uh, area for questions. Uh, I'm putting up Catherine and Carl's contact information. So uh, we'll also be following up with a um, survey either uh, tomorrow or Friday. Let us know if this was in, uh, informative. Also, if you'd like to talk to Catherine more about all the whiz-bang neat stuff you saw about Dr. Connect, if you'd like to talk to Carl about those reports uh, and find out, you know, how to pull all that together, we call it a practice analysis. And we slice and dice it that there's 13 different tests, and we just showed you a couple of them today. So. Um, there's the information, and, and we'll then include this. We've got an email will be coming into your uh, inbox later on this afternoon from Marketing and Metagame, uh, which will provide you access to this recorded video, the slides, uh, and also that ebook about the eight comma HIPAA compliance errors to avoid. So, um, I guess. Uh, Carl, do you have any uh, closing comments to kind of uh, wrap everything up? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for participating on the call today and uh, would really encourage people to take advantage of the technology that's out there. Um, I'd reemphasize what Catherine said, you can't afford not to do this and to really manage uh, the workflows that are going on in your practice. And uh, as Glenn said, don't hesitate to reach out to me directly, my email and cell phone number are on there and we can help talk to you about how to get these numbers together so that you can more efficiently use tools like Dr. Connect to build the practice in a way that makes economic sense. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Catherine, closing comments? Um, yes, I appreciate everybody uh, taking their lunch time to uh, learn more about how technology can uh, help your practice be more efficient. Um, and Carl and Clint, I appreciate you guys um, participating in this too. Uh, please, anybody, uh, feel free to reach out to me, either uh, call or email.
and um, you guys have a great day. Okay, great. So uh, thank you, folks, and uh, we will be in contact with you uh, the next time around.